strength training for athletes, strength training for sports, and specifically strength training for throwing event athletes. Right, I discussed the three methods of getting stronger, the repeated effort, the limit, absolute limit strength, similar to powerlifter training, and the explosive strength training, which would be similar in some respects to weightlifting, but weightlifters would also do limit strength because they have to perform a movement very quickly with the heaviest object they can. Moving on from those three methods and how those three methods should be utilized, for most explosive event athletes, repeated strength is not a necessity and the Soviets spent very, very little time doing it. Some athletes, depending on their coaches, did as little as two weeks a year. Some did as much as six weeks a year. Some athletes did no repeated strength effort. Um, in weightlifting, uh, because of the weight categories, there wasn't a need to try and grow the cross-section of the muscle, the muscle or get heavier. So what we're focused on is limit strength and speed strength. And we're also looking at general strength, specific strength, and special strength. Special strength is the ability to accelerate instantly against resistance, against a lot of resistance. So the creation of special strength is through limit strength and speed strength. And specific strength has more of a connection to the event than general strength. But if you zigzag the training, where you might spend three weeks focusing on general strength, spend three weeks focus on, on specific strength, go back to the general strength and attempt to achieve a higher peak, you increase both of these different types of strength. So special strength, specific strength, general strength, and the methods that are used, repeated um, efforts, limit efforts and explosive efforts, but for anything where you have to either move the human body quickly or move an object quickly or move both quickly um, you want to focus on speed strength and limit strength and again you can zigzag them you can zigzag them you can have patterns where you spend three weeks focusing mostly on limit strength doing um, some speed strength three weeks of focus on speed strength doing some limit strength and you keep building up building up now, the next thing is the loading. The human body responds to wave loading. What's wave loading? Week one, you have a high level effort. Week two, you have a very high level effort. Week three, you have a flat out level effort. Week four, you drop down to something similar to the first week and move up to another peak so that you can hit some sort of peak in one of these exercises every three weeks and you keep changing the exercises so you're hitting new peaks in some new area each time. Now you might say I'm doing all this working on different types of strength and I'm constantly hitting peaks in um, specific strength, general strength, speed strength etc etc. How does it all come together? Well your athlete is practicing the event all the time. So the one thing that they're not forgetting how to do is to practice their event, whether it's a throwing event, whether it's another event in sport, whether they're a triple jumper, whether they're a decathlete, whether they're a wrestler, boxer, strongman, etc, etc. Now, a quick point in very specific to throwing event athletes. They realise that there's, there's um, devices in the muscles to prevent the muscles tearing or overexerting themselves. And usually there's things called the Golgi tendon apparatus, etc., etc. Effectively, it's a fail-safe method in the muscles to stop them either stretching too far or to stop them taking on a heavy contraction or load. And this can inhibit the muscles, the agonistic muscles, in doing something. When the antagonistic muscles are weaker, so, to be able to push harder with the agonistic muscles, you have to train the antagonistic muscles. 
So alongside every heavy bench press, you do heavy rows. Alongside specific dumbbell incline bench press, you should be doing a very specific type of rowing action. Alongside your narrow grip bench press, you're doing heavy cheat curls because you want to strengthen the antagonistic muscles so much that the whole unit expresses maximum power and it's not holding back for fear of tearing weak antagonistic muscles. Now, in powerlifting and in the East German style of training, there is core exercises that you do, plus some or two assistance, some assistance exercises, and they would train the core exercises all the way through, and they would rotate the assistance exercises for stimuli. This worked very well for the East Germans, but the Russians, the Soviets rotated all their exercises regularly. So they would go from back squats to front squats, to half squats, to step ups, and back to front squats. It's about achieving a mixture for the individual athlete, but they've got to be lifting heavy, or they've got to be lifting a submaximal weight at maximum explosiveness. Now it's okay to do repeated effort stuff with the antagonistic stuff because you just want it to be strong enough so that it doesn't inhibit the main muscles. You don't, you don't need to do the explosive stuff with the antagonistic muscles. You just need them to be strong enough so that the main muscles don't hold back for fear of damaging them. Wave loading, you can have all kinds of complicated waves, but one, two, three, to hit a peak, drop back and one, two, three to hit a peak. And that type of recovery works well with beginner and intermediate athletes. More advanced athletes might be going drop back, might be doing a two week cycle. Light, heavy, boom, light, heavy, boom. But that's someone at the very top of their game with 10 or 12 years of strength training. The volume of weight training should be moderated by the volume of event training whatever the event is whatever the sport is and i'm just taking the sport i know best shot putters when you're doing a lot of throwing and a lot of heavy work in the shot you would do less weight training when you're doing not quite so much throwing you do more weight training so you try to balance the volume of training um another thing that traditionally a lot of throwers did but less and less are doing it now as information is spread out and people are learning from you know um, more knowledgeable coaches and more knowledgeable athletes is they would ease off or even stop lifting weights during the competition season but now we know that athletes go right up to their maximum in speed strength exercises within a few days of competitions so that that neurological ability to instantly switch on all the lights, to instantly recruit all the motor units is, is still there. You want it to be switching on at maximum a few days before your competition and you rest that ability before the competition, but only for a few days. So it's still fresh in the memory system of the body and you go bang. And that's it really. That's my, my little talk on Soviet style strength training, East German style strength training, limit strength and explosive strength. I never cease to be amazed by how strong certain athletes are. And some of the athletes that are noted for their, their speed in their performance are actually very, very, very strong. Adam Nelson, who was a world and Olympic shot put champion and not an overly tall gentleman, not an overly heavily built gentleman, was noted for his fabulous speed. But in training, the most interesting aspect of his training was a very high level of limit strength in squatting and incline bench pressing. He was, he was just way up into the high 200s in, in the incline bench press. Well, mid to high 200s and he was up in the 300s in the squat. So he had a huge amount of limit strength. 
The athletes that I talked to did an awful lot of similar things in training and did an awful lot of different things. And Mike Stolci, the 1992 Olympic shot put champion, trained in very, very similar fashion to other shot putters in the gym. But his approach to the throwing event was minimalist. He didn't use lighter implements. He didn't use heavier implements. He didn't use any variations or drills whatsoever. He didn't throw the shot overhead. He didn't do standing putts. He just simply practiced the event over and over again in each training session. He did no sprinting, no jumping, no, no bounding, no throwing heavy objects, nothing. He simply trained in the weights room and practiced the full event with the competition weight shot. It worked for him. Different things work for different athletes. But the one commonality I noticed was heavy limit strength training heavy, heavy amounts of leg work, years of developing and producing a result. Um, I think the current world record holder in the shot put, Ryan Krauser, was, was asked recently what single exercise helped him the most. And his answer encapsulated all the complexities. He said the exercise that helped him the most was 20 years of training. That's it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much. And hey, if you want to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Knowledge Joy, wonderful. Thank you. Bye.